समस्तजनकल्याण निरथ करुणाम नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विवर इज ऑडियो ओके फाइन थैंक यू माय सल्यूटेशंस टू एवरीवन प्रसन्न या प्रणाम गुड इवनिंग today tomorrow and day after we would be discussing the last portion of the second chapter the last portion the theme is where arjuna asks a question about uh, who is a how does a realized person who has understood the truth move around in this world how does he respond to that krishna gives the qualities of the enlightened how the enlightened respond to the world stata pragna this portion we will see and it is around 18 verses the mahabharat war had almost uh, 30 plus lakhs of soldiers the 11 and 7 akshoyanis 11 of the kauravas 7 of the pandavas 18 akshoyanis put together goes to somewhere around 32 plus lakhs of soldiers plus the horses the elephants the camels and the support staff for that all together there could have been 50 60 000, i mean lakhs of people assembled there and it's a world has never seen a war of that kind earlier so when both these armies have assembled everybody was tensed not sure of the next movement war definitely uncertain we are not sure what's going to happen next so the uncertainty of very life uncertainty of our very existence is is what the war is anybody can die the people whom you love can die you yourself can die because the war is of that kind only one person in that entire army of people was smiling please think only one person was smiling what would be the level of tension and this person was smiling vyasa mentions it very clearly he tells dhritarashtra that arjuna psychologically collapsed now i don't think arjuna can ever recover he says that very clearly that arjuna collapsed psychologically and arjuna looks devastated i don't think this war can uh, happen he was not saying it in so many words but suggesting and dhritarashtra was anticipating that oh oh okay what they tried to demotivate arjuna worked and arjuna has collapsed but then sanjaya reports to dhritarashtra wait 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 there is one person here smiling prahasanniva bharata he bharata Hey, Dhritarashtra, there is one person here. He is smiling, and that is Sri Krishna. Now, this one word of telling that Krishna was smiling is very, very important. Even on a tense situation like that, what has to happen is unavoidable. The man of perfect understanding is calm, silent. serene and was smiling saying yes fate had its own way that this has to happen we tried our best to avoid it but nothing could be done it has to happen and we need to face it let's face it with a smile if we are prepared to meet life we can do it with a smile if we are not prepared to handle life it would be very hard 
well prepared then whatever comes to us we can take it in the right attitude if we are prepared we look forward to life if we are not prepared we survive we exist you understand it is survival and existence because we are not prepared if we are prepared we look forward it could be any kind of a situation we never know what situation life can offer but whatever it offers a well prepared person would say let me handle it looks forward this is what was krishna the entire attempt of the bhagavad gita is to rise up to that state of mind which all of us can when i say all of us can we must trust it no we must trust it why if you think we cannot people like them would not have come to us imagine person like guru dev spending four decades teaching this knowledge across is very very clear that we can so for me faith works very easy my guru thought i can so i can otherwise he wouldn't have come to us right and he believed that we can and he's not going to tell us lies since we understand that we can it's only grasping the knowledge trying to apply it and we can lift ourselves to a higher state so this is what uh, we are trying to do and 18 verses of chapter 2 last 18 verses indicates this alone what is that state of mind how can we develop those qualities so who's going to chant just chanting stick from arjuna's question arjuna vacha will be lead and follow yes you lead and we will repeat after you arjuna uvacha arjuna uvacha sthita pragnasya ka bhasha sthita pragnasya ka bhasha samadhisthasya keshava samadhisthasya keshava sthita dhikim prabhasheta स्थितधीर्खिं प्रभासेत किमासीतं व्रजेत किं किमासीतं व्रजेत किं वंस अगेन अर्जुन उवाच अर्जुन उवाच स्थित प्रज्ञस्य का भाषा प्रज्ञस्य का भाषा समाधिस्थस्य केशव समाधिस्थस्य केशव स्थितधीकिं प्रभाषेत स्थितधीकिं प्रभाषेत किमासीत व्रजेत किं किमासीत व्रजेत किं अर्जुन वाच Arjuna asks this question Stitha pragnasya ka bhasha What are the qualities of a man of realization stitha pragnya Stitha pragnasya ka bhasha what is his discrimination I mean I mean description how is he described this wise person who is established in the truth Samadhi stasya keshava he keshava ho krishna please tell me a person who has reached the state of samadhi who has lifted his mind into absolute stillness our mind struggles hard to become quiet samadhi is a state of mind where the mind is completely still no thoughts coming up the mind has reached that stillness so here is a person krishna who has reached that state so arjuna is asking him that question please tell me what are the qualities description of a person who has managed to make his mind still samadhi stasya keshava how does that wise person speak how does he talk 
or how does he move around what are how do I recognize somebody like that all of us have each one of us have one one notion about an enlightened person <laughs> everyone if we have to write a essay competition or something describe an enlightened person the number of people here will have each one 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 view because we all think you know we do not know what that is and we think um, yeah and sometimes we superimpose different strange qualities uh, um, various things uh, who is astata pragna so arjuna is also asking how would this person be would he be always silent never talking or would he move around uh, talking or how does what are his qualities now there is one important factor we need to understand in hindu shastra the student is given the liberty to question to inquire this is very important we must have the liberty to ask questions if we do not ask questions we would never get to know the right answers so this ability to i mean the freedom to ask questions are given in hindu shastra which is a very significant aspect so we need to understand as hindus we need to understand the kind of freedom we enjoy just being a hindu the kind of freedom we enjoy do you have a dress code is there any compulsions for you to do few things only then you can study gita you want to go into a temple and pray you have the freedom you want to sit at home and pray you have the freedom you want to read gita you have the freedom you want to read puranas you have the freedom imagine the the freedom which we enjoy and nobody controls our life there is no sanyasi or a priest or someone controlling our life we believe your actions will give you the results the consequence of actions one has to find ishwara will take care so only suggestions are given and there is no control it's a beautiful way of life that's where the freedom is to ask questions and the word question comes from a que- from the word quest quest is something which we are seeking we are yearning for something we have a quest to know and therefore a question and arjuna is justified here asking this question saying i understand from you the state of higher realization but how would we recognize this what are the traits what are the qualities of such a person this is the question arjuna places this is the introduction for this topic now onwards we will see what are the traits of those uh, wise people now why should we know about it the reason is very simple when we admire the qualities of a wise person when we learn to admire them we would like to possess them what we admire we would like to possess all that which we are very possessive is things which we deeply like and we admire so what are the qualities of a wise person so here is a 18 verses talking about it in different ways of showing the glory of a man of realization how that state of mind is how does how does that person respond 
When we start admiring them, we would like to possess. And once we like to possess them, then we are seeking sincerely. Because I want this. So here is a description which makes us admire the qualities of a wise person. And therefore, we would like to possess them. It's a beautiful chapter, just like an Upanishad. In Upanishad, the student asks a question and the teacher answers. A dialogue between the student and the teacher. Similarly, these 18 verses are like that. Arjuna asks a question and Bhagavan Krishna answers. Yeah. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Prajahati Yadakaman Prajahati Yadakaman Sarvan Parthamanogatan Sarvan Parthamanogatan Atman Yevatmana Tushtaha Atman Yevatmana Tushtaha Sthita Pragnyasta Dochyate Sthita Pragnyasta Dochyate Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Prajahati Yadakaman Sarvan Parthamanogatan Sarvan Parthamanogatan Atman Yevatmana Tushtaha Atman Yevatmana Tushtaha Sthita Pragnyasta Dochyate Sthita Pragnyasta Dochyate Bhagavan Uvacha, Bhagavan Krishna says Prajahati Yada Kaman Sarvan Partha Manogatan Atmani Eva Atmana Tushtaha Stita Pragnas Tadochate. He says here Prajahati Yada Kaman Sarvan Partha Manogatan. The Lord says, O Arjuna, this person Atmani Eva Atmana Tushtaha. Tushtaha, satisfied, happy, santushta, content. Satisfied in himself, atmani eva, a person who is satisfied in himself, by himself, and when he transcends craving, craving for various things he has transcended. Why? Because the person finds himself very, very happy. Such a state of mind, whoever has reached that person we call Stata Pragna. Two points. You are happy with yourself and there is no more craving. Recently, someone sent me a letter, Gurudev's letter, very beautiful letter, where the, looks like the, the person who has written this letter to Gurudev was asking about a particular uh, mission worker who walked out of the mission, who wanted to be on his own. So saying something they must have asked. So Gurudev says, it is nothing strange, a well-trained worker walking out of the organization. There's nothing strange about it because this is bound to happen in an organization. And then he says, this person, what do you think they would do? We have trained them with this. They will only do this work. They will continue to do only this work. And does it matter that they have to do under our banner? He puts a question. Does it matter? And I'm sure so-and-so would do vigorously more work. And everything is as it should be and it is going on well by his grace. Look at the letter. For someone walking out, a well-trained person walking out of the organization, Gurudev's response to that uh, devotee whoever was asked that question, everything is going on as it should be by his grace. Therefore, we cannot have any complaints. 
to complain is being ungrateful look at that line to complain is being ungrateful when I read this particular line I mean it came on a on the phone I read the message came you have to leave the phone and sit and think about it for a while to complain is ungrateful it should be this way and the Lord is doing it and everything is going on so well to complain is ungrateful what a deep meaning those two words have to complain is ungrateful if you analyze it deeply being unhappy is ungrateful you, you agree yes. think about it if we are unhappy we are ungrateful to the Lord how many things the Lord has given us from childhood to now how much he has given us think if you can do this little exercise when you get back today and before you come tomorrow list down what you consider as blessings in your life listen what all you consider as the blessings in your life if we can start looking at the blessings what we have received Where do we start counting the blessings? Can you breathe normally? Oh, yeah. Is that a blessing? Huh. Can you see? Touch and taste? Smell and hear? Your parents? The Guru? access to the Shastra I mean the list goes on when we start looking at what we have received we would never have complaints I that one line of what Gurudev said to complain is being ungrateful is a very deep statement after giving so much we still complain after the Lord has given us so much so you know what happens we remember things we have not got and forget what we have received don't forget what we have received you want to ask something you want to go and get something do it but let it happen from fulfillment let it happen from happiness the Lord has given me so much I am happy Santushta and then I want something then it is a very different thing working from happiness working for happiness We should not work for happiness. We should work from happiness. The Lord has given enough and more. Once I remember all that, I'm happy. I feel blessed. Once we feel blessed and then you want to move in the world and do various things, go ahead and do it. But do it with this feeling of being fulfilled. Don't do it craving for happiness if I get this desire if I get that desire I will be happy and it goes on isn't it 
we should recognize what we have received how much we have received already if we can remember that we would be happy so that's an important exercise for you to write down what you consider as blessings how many can i write Start with top 10. Top 10 what you consider as blessings. Now this is the blessing of my life. Number one. Number two. This is my next thing I consider as a blessing of my life. Number two. Number three. Write top 10 and go on up to 108. <laughs> 108. Then we know, you know, like we know how much we have been blessed. We would be happy. And then we may go around, since, since we are alive and we have to move around in the world, move around in the world from happiness, not craving for happiness. Work, live from happiness. Respond to the world from happiness, not for happiness. This is one of the qualities of a sthita prajna. The person who has reached the higher state of mind, santushtaha, happy, content, feeling fulfilled, then goes on. We need to recognize how dangerously our joys are balanced in this world if we are not alert. With lot of effort you want to get something in the world. Try hard and get it. How long will you be happy? How long? So the best way would be when the mind craves for something, you understand a desire, if our mind craves for something, we need to ask ourselves two, three questions. First question, do I need it? Question number one. When the mind is craving, you know, like this I want, demands. First question, do I need it? And if you're convinced that you need it, if you're convinced, because a proper inquiry would lead you to something else. <laughs> if we do not uh, make that kind of an inquiry and we use all our intellectual knowledge, logic to justify I need it. Okay. If you have managed to justify that this I need, very good. Next question which is a more dangerous question. How long will I be happy with it? Let us know. The craving what we have, the urge what we have, the desire which we seek, let us know how long that can make us happy. Most of us think, if I get this, my life is made. Illusion. Illusion. If I get this, let me know how long I will be happy. Second question is important. Okay, I want this. I get this. How long will I be happy? Because that is truth. That is reality to know it. Okay, if I want this, this is how I'll be happy. Third question. If I don't get it, how will I be? Three questions. These three questions will give us complete clarity to deal with the desire, yearning, you know, various things. Do I need it? If I get it, how long will I be happy? And if I don't get it, what will happen to me? 
three questions. If we are clear about it, then we know what we are seeking in the world. Otherwise, we may think this will make me happy, we will run after it, get it, and then very soon we may be unhappy having it. So it, these three questions if we ask, we will have absolute clarity on what we want. And this will also make us remember what we have received. Because the last question, how will I be without it? I will still be happy without it. Why? I have got enough already. Then we live in this world differently. Otherwise, we go on continuously with this yearning for more and more happiness, not knowing that we already have it. Continuing the next verse. Dukheshvanu dvigna manaha Dukheshvanu dvigna manaha Sukheshu vigata sprahaha Sukheshu vigata sprahaha Vita raga bhaya krodhaha Vita raga bhaya krodhaha Sthita dhir munir Chate Stita dear Muni Ruchate Dukeshwanu Dvigna Manaha Dukeshwanu Dvigna Manaha Sukeshu Vigata Spraha Sukeshu Vigata Vita Raga Bhaya Krodaha Stita Dhir Muni Ruchyate Stita Dhir Muni Ruchyate Dukkesh Vanud Vigna Manaha Sukeshu Vigata Sprahaha Vita Raga Bhaya Krodaha Stita Dhir Muni Ruchyate He is considered as a Muni Manana Shilavan one who meditates, contemplates. He is considered as a Muni, as Tata Pragna, who has reached the highest state. Who is he? Dukeshvanu Dvigna Manaha Sukeshu Vigata Sprahaha. He does not get too depressed when sorrow comes to him. Neither does he get too excited if joyful experience comes to him. We live here in this world. All of us have lived sufficiently enough. Our own experience from childhood to now. How many times you were happy? How many times we were happy? How many times we were sad? Are they new? Are they new? New experience? Experience is one. Joy or sorrow? And how many times? It is not new experience at all. We have gone through them sufficiently. So when next time, what you consider as sorrow comes, do not get too perturbed by it. It is not a new experience. We have gone through enough of it. We know it for sure. It comes and it goes. Same way, Sukeshu. When we contact happiness and something makes us happy, do not get too excited about it. That is also not new. We also know, oh, I thought I would be very happy and it came to me after some time. In India, there's one state called Assam in the northeast India. Assam has a natural park, national park, where you have these single horned rhino. It's not there in other parts of India, 
predominantly they are, they are the population is more in Assam, Kaziranga National Park. I took a camp for children from Tamil Nadu, southern tip. From Tamil Nadu, we took all of them to Kaziranga. And the camp happened, and it, it was since mixed with outdoor activities. And one is, I really wanted the children to feel what it is to be in a jungle. Because they know jungle only through internet now. In internet, you know what jungle is. Google helps you clearly. You can go to the location and see what, but being there actually is different. So we wanted, and the cray, I mean, everyone wants to see that Reno. So early morning, we had some 25, 30 jeeps, and everybody were on it, and we went. Went inside the forest quite deep. We could not see one reno, not even one. And if at all anything appeared, the man who was driving the jeep, your guide would say, ah, look, 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 too far. Honestly, you do not know if it is a reno or a buffalo. <laughs> too far, you can't see. Now, all the children who came were thoroughly disappointed. They came to me, Swamiji, what is this? <laughs> uh, you said we will, we will watch Reno, we could not see one also, what is this? Now I went back to the tourist guide and I said, listen, we don't live in Assam for us to come back again and again. We are coming from Tamil Nadu, too far. Uh, and I need to see, and the children are there, now do something. So that guy said, I also feel very bad for you, what to do and all that. Okay, I'll extend my offer. After lunch, we will go again. The other side. <laughs> you see it, you see it, sir. After that, I can't. So with this side, since we went, we could not. We will try this way, let's go. So we had quick lunch and then everybody went this side, the other side to see. And for our good fortune, we could see lots of rhinos, herds of them. And then there is a, you know, like a, like a watchtower in the middle of the place where you, we all assemble there. So I, I reached that place and I was standing up in the watchtower and one girl came to me, school kid, very excited. She said, Swamiji, I saw a reno just 20 meters away from us. 20 meters only that Reno was there. It went like this and we were so happy to see in 20 meters distance this Reno crossing and she was all excited. There was another boy, quite naughty. He looked at her for a while and he said, Swamiji, I need to tell you this. We saw a Reno just by our jeep. We touched it. We touched it. The 20 meters joy was killed. Immediately gone. Just few minutes ago you were happy. Do you understand how dangerously these joys and sorrows are balanced? Just then you were happy. I saw 20, from morning we saw nothing. <laughs> Afternoon you saw, 20 meters distance you saw Reno, very happy. Till someone said we touched one. Ah, <laughs> uh, I should have touched. You see that? Is this not happening to us? You want something, you get it, and next moment somebody else gets something else. We are, happiness is gone just like that. Please understand how quickly we lose them. Which we wanted for a long time, we get it, but how quickly it is gone.
Krishna says, joy, sorrow are not new. They are same old experience coming back to us again and again. It is not new. We have gone through them sufficiently. Dukkeshu anud vigna manaha sukeshu vigatas praha vita raga bhaya krodaha That person is free from raga bhaya krodha three. Raga attachment bhaya fear krodha anger. Free from Raga Baya Krodha. Doesn't get too excited on what he gets, nor does he get depressed on what he misses out. Both have come, gone, accepting it. And at the same time, this person is free from these three attachment, fear, anger. We can drop these three. Stita Pragna. And they are connected, you understand. We can overcome fear only when we transcend attachment. Purna Vairagya, there is no fear. Vairagyam Eva Abhayam. Fearlessness happens only when we have detachment. When we do not have detachment, we will live life in fear. To things which I am attached, there is always a fear of losing it. I am attached to it, I may lose it. When I lose it, what happens? I cannot live without it. We depend on it so much that absence of it we cannot live now that is something willingly we have become a dependent that is what attachment is willingly we have become a dependent on things beings etc absence of it we are shattered and we never know how life would be where we would head what would happen so the best way to live here You can have things. Don't be attached. You saw this movie on a quest? You saw that? Mm. There's one dialogue which we, we have expressed in the movie. Gurudev and Swami Tapovan Maharaj talking about the mountain and the sunset. So Gurudev will ask him a question and Tapon Maharaj will answer. He'll say, you saw the sunset? You saw the mountain? Wasn't it beautiful? How huh, beautiful. Were you attached to it? No. Then, Swami Tapon Maharaj lines in the movie is, you are to have, not to possess. Have but don't possess. Now I need to tell you. We wrote these lines. Okay. <laughs> Where did I get this line? You are to have and not to possess. Madonna. Madonna. Madonna? Huh. The lady who sang Papa Don't Preach. <laughs> that person only. She brought out an album called A Ray of Light. That is Vedantic. And she has sung something in Sanskrit also in that album. There's one song where she has done it in Sanskrit. You should admire the spirit of her trying to sing in Sanskrit. You should not see beyond that. But there, inspired by Adi Shankaracharya, she has composed various uh, songs. 
and most of them are philosophical. In one of the songs she says, what can I do? I come straight to you, but I am told you are to have and not to hold. You are to have. Have something, don't hold it. Having is at the physical plane. Holding on to it is at the mental level. Have, don't possess. If we can learn this, that is the best gift you can give yourself. Moving around in the world, having things but not possessing them. Attaching ourselves is with the mind. Having is, everything is there. You have the sun, the moon, the stars. You understand, they are all there. Have but don't possess. This is the trick. If we can develop, master this, we have done a great service to ourselves. It's a giant leap one takes on the spiritual path if one can develop this. The great masters had this quality. They had this quality. You have don't possess. Have but don't hold. It is there with you, let it be there. It goes away from you, fine. Don't hold on. If you hold on, it will still go. And that's where the pain comes because I was holding on to it and it was snatched away from me. So the best way of living life here is developing this ability to have and not to possess overcome attachment with right understanding. If we can overcome attachment, with it fear goes. If fear doesn't go, we live here without bringing our potential into performance. We don't bring our potential into performance. Fear stops it. Most of us don't bring our full potential out because we are scared. And what kind of a life is it to live in fear? Living in fear always. What life is that? I was fortunate to associate with Gurudev from my childhood. So it's a long association. In all my association, as a child, as a youth, as an adult, I have never seen Gurudev scared. Not once. No fear. Nirbhayatva. Absolutely no fear. And this is something his own Guru Bhais used to tell. One of another disciple of Swami Tapan Maharaj, Govindagiri. Govindagiri Maharaj used to say this, in Chinmaya we have never seen him scared. Even when he was a student, studying, he was never scared. And that stands out. Wherever one moves, no fear. How beautiful that life is. That you are walking on earth without any fear. We should overcome fear. To overcome fear, we should overcome attachment. To overcome attachment, learn to have and not to hold. Have, don't hold. This happened in uh, Coimbatore, one of the 
small cities in India. I was again very fortunate. I was with Gurudev that time in one of the devotees' house, Chandrasekhar Warrior. We were sitting there. One person asked Gurudev, this was in the year 1991. One person asked Gurudev, saying, Swamiji, this organization of yours, Chanmya Mission, you have expanded it so big. Are you not worried? What will happen to it after you? When you go away, what will happen to you? What will happen to it after you? Gurudev went in 93, 25 years have gone. So the question they asked was, what will happen to it after you? Now, what kind of an answer you would expect? He looked at him for a while, smiled and he said, I don't care what happens to it when I'm living. <laughs> I don't care what happens to it when I'm living. You are asking after me. When I'm gone, what will happen to the mission? Please understand, I don't bother about it while living only. What happens to it? Very clear. And he meant every word of it. Huh? I mean, we know it when he said that. He said it happened by his will. His will wants it, it will continue. I have nothing to do with it. Can you imagine? The amount of work which has happened, he never claimed as he did it. He never claimed it. It is I who did it. Never. He saw it happening. Never owned it up. It is the will of the Lord. If he wants, he will continue. If he doesn't want, he will wind up. And then Gurudev in his own style goes one step further to tell that guy who asked that question. He says, if this organization falls down in front of me, if it is falling down in front of me, I will stand there and whistle. I will stand there and whistle seeing it fall. Why he built it and he is taking it down. I have nothing to do. This is detachment. This is devotion. This is humility. It is the Lord who did, not me. 100% surrender. It has happened by his will. I have nothing to do with this. Now you see, and he lived that kind of a detachment. That is why this person was never scared of anything. He was never living in fear. This quality we should develop. Don't get too excited with joys. Don't get too depressed with sorrows. And become free from attachment, fear and anger. Your anger is equal to your attachment. When we get angry on something, what is anger? An obstacle which comes between you and your object of attachment. If an obstacle arises between what you want and your object of desire, if an obstacle comes, that obstacle creates anger. So if I have attachment for something, fear and anger will come. If I have no attachment, there is no fear or anger. Vita raga baya krodha. So, one who doesn't get too excited on receiving things, doesn't get too depressed on missing anything, and free from attachment, fear and anger, such a person is called stata pragna. So, it all starts with one. When whatever we have, don't own them. Consider it as Lord's. It is His, not yours. He has provided. You are a caretaker.
take care of it as be as best as you can don't be attached if we can practice this we overcome attachment and naturally fear goes with it with it we live life to our full potential we taraga bhaya krodha continuing yes sarvatra na bhisne ha ha तत्प्राप्य शुभाशुभम नाभिनंदति न द्वेष्टी नाभिनंदति न द्वेष्टी तस्य प्रज्ञा प्रतिष्ठिता तस्य प्रज्ञा प्रतिष्ठिता यस्सर्वत प्राप्य शुभाशुभ नाभिनंदति न द्वेष्टी नाभिनंदति न द्वेष्टी तस्य प्रज्ञा प्रतिष्ठिता he is unattached sarvatra everywhere to everything the person has no attachment neither does he rejoice nor dveshti nor does he hate anything favorable unfavorable conditions come one accepts them ramayan we have all heard of lord ram responding most of us have heard that oh dasharath called him and said the kingdom is yours and after some time kaike called and said go walk to the forest and both the times ram was balanced this we have heard most of us know in kamba ramayan kamban the tamil poet who has translated or no not translated he has rewritten ramayan keeping the main story line there he speaks about sumitra's response the queen sumitra how she responded on hearing this ram has to go to the forest sita volunteered immediately sita said i am going with you and there was no compulsion on lakshman there was absolutely no compulsion on lakshman lakshman volunteered himself saying i am coming with you how many years 14 years living in a palace lakshman makes a decision ram i will come with you to forest for 14 years how would a mother respond to this lakshman's mother sumitra how would a mother respond to this if it has to be my mother she'll say go hide somewhere <laughs> lock yourself inside don't come out till ram goes to the forest be quiet are you crazy 14 years you will go into the forest sumitra's response look at that hindu woman she looks at lakshman and says i am proud of you first response lakshman i am proud of you you took a decision which made me proud i'm happy you took this decision the mother feels proud of the son she says i'm proud of you that you took a decision like this then she tells 
Lakshman. Do not go to the forest as Ram's brother. You are his younger brother. You would be pampered. As a younger brother, Ram always pampered you. Do not go there as a younger brother. Remove that idea from your mind. If you want to do what you want to do, you want to serve him, go there as a dasa, as a worker, committing to a duty, not as his brother. The mother is advising this. Follow him as a worker, as a dasa, and serve him, not as a brother. As a brother, you can oversee few things. I mean, you may over, I mean, may not pay attention to few things, but when you are a dasa, you will give full attention. Follow Ram as a dasa, as a worker, not as a brother. First line, I am proud of you. Second line, follow him as a worker, not as a brother, because you will be pampered otherwise. You will not do justice to what you are going for. Having said these two, this was okay when you read. The third sentence, what she said was much more deeper. She tells Lakshman, if anything happens to Ram untoward, let's say Ram is killed. If anything like that happens to Ram, it should be like Lakshman died, then Ram died. It can't be that Ram died and then Lakshman died. This is not okay. Look at the mother. Look at the response. So if anything happens to Ram, it should be like Lakshman died and then Ram died. Not other way. Ram died and then Lakshman also died. No. And the last point she tells. This is non-negotiable. We cannot accept that you returning back without Ram. What is Sumitra's understanding of Ram? What is her wisdom about Ram? The heart is not acceptable. That you returned back without Ram, this is not acceptable. Now please think, look at this mother she is a sthita pragna, absolutely established in wisdom. All of a sudden, unexpected turn of events. Her own son has opted to go to the forest for 14 years. 14 long years to the forest. How did she respond? I am happy you made a good decision, proud of you. Go as a worker. If this is the advice a mother can give to her son, look at the parenting. What kind of a parent? Sibling rivalry. <laughs> if something like that happens, it shows parenting. It shows parenting. This is the kind of a value the parent has to give. Think. The respect and reverence she is creating in Lakshman's mind towards Ram. And that to what? Not one, two days. Fourteen years out into the forest. A shocking news, mind was balanced. A balanced mind responds the best. A disturbed mind would not respond. A mind must be balanced. The qualities of a stata pragna. The Queen Sumitra showed it. Krishna says here, he is unattached everywhere. 
neither does he rejoice nor does he hate on facing various shubha shubha conducive and conducive good bad auspicious inauspicious various things coming this person would face life balanced we need this strength if we can cultivate this strength we live life well if we don't have the strength we are a weak link shattered every now and then so the whole thing how do we develop this the first point here also that person wherever he goes sarvatra at various situations never attached to anything so this is something which is being repeated often in the gita if you understand if you read the book more closely this one topic of being detached krishna brings it up 80 plus times in the gita again and again in different ways he will bring the same topic be detached don't get attached because that's the catch if we can overcome that we are free so favorable unfavorable situations come if you are not attached to what is the what is the fear in it so overcoming attachment is something which we must focus on best way to do that would be committing or attaching to something nobler and higher so that to the lower we never get attached our attachment should be something to the higher so that we can play with the lower if we try to drop the attachment at the lower we would struggle hard attaching to the higher gives us the strength to drop the lower satsangatve nissangatvam nissanga detachment is possible only with getting attached to something higher so where should we begin first we should know what is lower what is higher we we need to know that for sure once we are clear about what is lower plane of life what is higher plane of life we are attached to the higher when i'm attached to the higher i develop detachment to the lower when i develop detachment to the lower the lower can never affect me again in all conditions in all situations wherever we go we need to keep this in mind don't allow yourself to get attached we close at what time nine, nine. yeah one more verse yada samharate chayam कूर्मोंगानीव सर्वश इंद्रियाद्रियाभ्य इंद्रियाद्रियाभ्य तज्ञा प्रतिष्ठिता संहरते चायम् कूर्मोंगानीव सर्वश इंद्रियाद्रियाभ्य इंद्रियाद्रियाभ्य तज्ञा प्रतिष्ठिता तज्ञा प्रतिष्ठिता यदा संवरते छा कूर्मोंगानीव सर्वश कृष्ण गिव्स एन एग्जाम्पल of tortoise just like a tortoise 
has the ability to withdraw its limbs into the shell at the sight of danger. A tortoise keeps moving. And the moment the tortoise finds a sense of danger, some threat somewhere, some movement, the tortoise immediately withdraws all its limbs and sits inside the shell. The outer shell of the tortoise is very strong. It is safely guarded, well protected inside that shell. And once the tortoise feels everything is calm, quiet, the threat is no more, the tortoise comes out of the shell, brings the limbs out, starts crawling. Again a threat withdraws. Just as tortoise withdraws its limbs, takes shelter in the shell, so is a wise person. The moment he feels something is coming to him, which is not required, he withdraws into the shell of knowledge. He withdraws there and sits there comfortably. Take shelter in knowledge. It will guard us. It will protect us. We will be fine if we do it. For this, we should be very, very alert. Very alert we should be. Tortoise is alert. Little disturbance. It could feel very sensitive. The moment it feels it is alert, it withdraws. If we are not alert, we move with the limbs outside, you know, and then there is possibilities of danger. Now, how do I apply this in my life? He says, the wise man withdraws just like the tortoise at the sight of a threat. He withdraws himself to the knowledge. Three questions. What is the first question? Do I need it? That question you should be alert. Walking in the world. There are a lot of fascinating things. And you see something. First question, do I need it? If we don't have that question, Ah, this is beautiful. This is nice. I think I should have it. How would I get it? One after another, one after another, we go into it. If we are alert, we will not touch it. We will allow it to pass. You may be living in America, but I'm sure Indians understand this game cricket. <laughs> Here you may not play as one plays in India, but this game is so much deep in Indian, maybe DNA. <laughs> so I'm sure most of you know the game. You know the best stroke in this game? is not a stroke. It is called well left. <laughs> Those who know the game, you understand. Yeah. Well left. The ball comes towards you. It is coming. Don't touch it. Watch it, go closer, take the bat off. And if you do it well, the commentator says, well left. <laughs> well left. If you don't do it, you try. Sneak. Caught in slips. You slipped. 
please think what saves you from it it may come towards you but you don't have to touch it allow it to go how many things come towards us we go on touching tortoise doesn't do that it withdraws aha this is coming i have nothing to do let me be safe here we need to know simple life is very simple if we understand the basics we need to know what is essentials what is non essentials this understanding should be there what is essential what is non essential if we are clear about it various things come they could be non essentials we will allow them to go we will not touch them we will not get caught it comes we allow it ha huh, let it go let it go if we are not alert that's where the whole thing is the entire success is on how alert we are to our own goal in vivek chudamani adi shankara says forgetfulness is death pramade mrityu forgetfulness is death if i forget that goal that is equal to death i lose myself mrityu it's death we destroy ourselves if we can remember the goal ever alert so various things when they come to us we know not to get carried away by them we understand this is not required allow it to go we are free fear of missing out right fear of missing out fomo what is that called fomo fomo fear of missing out you know jamo <laughs> joy of missing out <laughs> joy of missing out i am happy how it went i don't have to touch it you are alert joy of missing out go go not for me i am happy as i am socrates used to do this joy of missing out he'll go to a marketplace watch everything come back <laughs> buy nothing go come back every evening routine so finally some of his disciples were annoyed and they said why do you do this either you go buy something you don't buy i mean you go there and you come back why he said very clearly i go there to see how happy i am without any of them <laughs> without any of them we have already got too much for us to be happy remember the exercise <laughs> we've already got too much to be happy we don't have to fear of missing something there is joy already so when things come if we are alert we will not fall into it if we are not alert we slip into it krishna gives an example of a tortoise now that's a beautiful example to remember it withdraws its shell now you understand in temples and all that if you go on the lamp you have a tortoise at the entrance you have a tortoise entrance of the temple you are going in withdraw everything let the mind be within not outside so it's a very beautiful example of tortoise how tortoise withdraws and stays inside so does a wise man does not get carried away with the senses he knows to withdraw just that he knows that he is happy without any of them 
This is the way a sthita pragna is. More of it, the rest of the verses we will take tomorrow. I have uh, one announcement to make. In Chinmaya Mission, we are trying to find out how many people who have associated with us have done PhD. Because we need this academic strength to handle different academic challenges we have. <coughs> you, you remember Mughal history, which you must have studied, if you studied in India? Who is Baba's son? Humayun. Humayun son. Akbar. Jahangir. Akbar. Akbar son. His son. Shah Jahan. Shah Jahan son. Who was that after that? Bahadur Shah Zafar. Very good. Thank you so much. Who is Rajendra Chola's son? Uh, don't tell me the father. Raj Raja Chola is the father. His son is Rajendra Chola. Who is Rajendra Chola's son? Krishna Devaraya's son. Marthanda Varman's son, Lalit Aditya's son. Who are these people? <laughs> you see our understanding of Indian history? Our own history. We know about the people who invaded us. Native heroes, we don't know. This is one topic, I'm just saying. Like this, there are many, many issues we need to handle academically. So we are trying to get people who are academically strong, who are qualified, who have an authority to take it up. For example, let me tell you this. Till 12th century, India's GDP was 32% in the world. Mohammad Ghazni, Mohammad Gore, invasion started. In 13th century, we came down to 25% GDP. India and China was the only ones who were doing it. India used to be 27, China used to be 23. 50-51% of the world's GDP was with, between India and China. And we never had a war with China till 1962. Two nations has a civilizational history of trade, commerce. There was never a war. Unfortunate, the war happened in 62. Otherwise, India, China was together. Now, this kind of GDP which we had, we had 23% of GDP till 18th century. In 18th century, at one point of time, India's GDP went higher than China for a few months and then it dropped. After that, India lost out completely. We came down to single digits and it has been a struggle. How did India have this much of a business, commerce in the world? How much? India has a very rich coastal history. Sea trade. Our sea trade goes to 2000 years further before. We were trading. That's how the GDP in the world, India had the maximum. Now, who writes about coastal history? 
we need people to do research on these topics. This is history is just one. Science. What is India's scientific heritage? We talk India, we talk about cultural heritage of India. What about India's scientific heritage? Did we not measure the space? Even with our equipments like telescope, etc. In every other field, economics. Indian economy, if you see, our policies, what we had, Dana and Dakshina. Where is Dana? Where is Dakshina? Many of the things which we think as dana is all dakshina. Planting trees, is it dana or dakshina? Planting trees. We owe. It is dakshina, it's not that I'm doing dana. It's not a charity, it is my debt. So Indian economy was based on dakshina, where person was made to give. We need research on it. Science. So we are looking at people who have already done PhDs. Get them together. Give different directions so that different kinds of papers come up. Produce papers and do it. So we are making a list of people who have done PhD associated with the mission. Not just Chinmaya Mission. We have working with few other Hindu organizations. We have told them, the heads of those organizations are also talking to their uh, followers and getting. Very soon we will have a list, probably 30, 40,000 people who have done PhD. We need academic strength to handle academic issues. So those of you who are interested in coming forward to take up this kind of a work. Uh, tomorrow you can leave your name with us and uh, we will get back to you seeing your talent, what you are good at, what is your strength, if you can write it, then we will get back to you and see how you can help. We are trying to get this uh, uh, academic force around the world with different Hindu organizations together. We had a couple of meetings already. Ram Krishna Mission, people were, they came for this uh, meeting once. Art of Living, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar came. Then we had, uh, um, ISKCON came. Uh, Gayatri Parivar, so like this we have eight to 10 organizations have come forward finding out their own uh, academic strength and putting them together. So we will connect uh, this academic strength in each city. Let's say in San Jose, if we have, let us say 40, 50 people who have done, we will give them a guidelines how often they should meet. So the guy, what we have worked out is these people should meet twice a year. And once at the state level, twice at the district level, like this we have worked out, we will share those guidelines, which in turn can help us uh, to make better presentations of what we have. Present it in a language which the world understands today. Spirituality, we are doing it, the way in which the world understands. But there are so many other things, Vedic traditions, Indian knowledge systems, so we are looking out for this. Interested people, please come forward. And mainly with this academic background would help us to do these, uh, present these papers better. Thank you. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Harihi Om Sri Gurubhyo Namaha. Harihi Om.